the Apple Studio display after two weeks. How is it held up? What do I think about it? Is it worth your money? Let's talk about it. The studio display has been one of the most controversial things that Apple has released recently, and I kind of get it. I even did a whole video, which I will link down below, about kind of the controversy behind it. But in this video, I'm more going to focus on my own personal experience using this monitor after two, almost three weeks. So if that sounds spicy, smash the like button and subscribe down below. And down in the comments, let me know what you think about the studio display. Do you like it? Do you think it's overpriced or overrated? What are your favorite features? What are your least favorite features? I'd love to see y'all down in the comments. So yeah, the first thing I wanted to kind of focus on is the design because I think this is actually one of the most beautiful monitors, if not the most beautiful kind of physically designed monitors out there right now. It's kind of subjective. Not everybody is into Apple's kind of cold and minimalist, almost utilitarian design where there's not even a power button on this freaking thing. You can't even yank out the power cable. There's three USB-C ports, one Thunderbolt port, a bunch of really good sounding speakers, a webcam, this and that. And it's kind of a minimalist dream monitor, but it does come at a hefty price starting at $15.99. And then if you want to add a nano kind of matte finish coating anti-glare, you add on even more money and then you can pile on even more money if you want a height adjustable stand. So you're looking at $1,600 plus tax US dollars just to start and then those other add-ons. Yeah, it's really, really expensive. To me, I think it's actually worth the money with a few caveats that I'll talk about in this video. But yeah, stay on topic, Ben. Getting back to the design, I think it's actually quite beautiful. The build quality is perfection. I mean, it looks like CGI when this thing is on your desk. It actually looks like a 3D render in real life, which is kind of insane. And that's one of the ways that I think Apple has justified the hefty price tag is you're not going to find another monitor period that's built like this in this price range. And yeah, it's expensive, but you know, I've used a bunch of other monitors like a Dell, not like the singer Adele, but a Dell <laughs> ultra sharp 4k monitor. That was like one third the price of this monitor. I've also used an LG 850. I also tried a BenQ 4K monitor, 32 inch. Every monitor that I've tried up to this point completely pales in comparison when it comes to build quality and design, in my personal opinion. Even though those monitors are way less expensive than this studio display, I think the studio display is kind of creating a new category for monitors and displays. It's not perfect, but I think where it really excels is the picture quality, the image quality, and kind of the overall experience, the ease of use is also another thing where you just plug one Thunderbolt cable from your computer into the back of this monitor and then you're good to go. This is one display that you really don't have to worry about how your Mac is going to be resized or resolution weirdness or color weirdness. If you're doing photo editing or video editing or anything kind of visual, like you just want a beautiful display to watch Netflix or YouTube or something, it's a beautiful display and it does use IPS technology. So the viewing angles are pretty good. Although IPS does feel a little bit dated to me and it kind of makes this monitor actually feel a little bit cheaper. You know, like it's built really well. It's built like a freaking tank, no problems with design and build quality. But then when you actually look at this thing and you compare it to something like the MacBook Pro 14 inch from 2021, which has a beautiful ProMotion display. And yes, I will be talking about the refresh rate in just a sec. The MacBook Pro 14 inch looks so good side by side with this display. Although if you do want a companion display for something like the MacBook Pro or your MacBook Air or really any computer, including PC, I would say the studio display is actually quite comparable in many ways to your MacBook Pro, etc. even though it doesn't officially support HDR, which is one of the main things that for me, it's a bit of a deal breaker because the video you're watching right now and all of my videos recently have been shot, edited and exported in HDR. And it's a little bit disappointing that this monitor does not support HDR. So I can't really officially monitor and kind of master my videos on the studio display because it does not officially support the HDR color space. That's kind of a big thing for me personally, but if you're not shooting in HDR, if you don't care about HDR, it's not a huge deal. And you could even technically actually watch HDR content on this monitor, but it won't be the kind of true HDR. It's something more in the EDR where it has a really nice kind of lush color palette, but it's not official HDR. 
DSLR. It doesn't get that peak brightness of, you know, the MacBook Pro or the iPhone 13 Pro, Pro Max. You're not gonna get that on the studio display, even though it looks really amazing and colors are very accurate and vibrant and stuff with HDR content or really any kind of video, you know, Netflix, et cetera, where there's a really dark background. Instead of seeing a dark black, like deep inky black that you would see on like the MacBook Pro 14 inch, for example, you see a kind of grayish black. It's not really black actually, it's just kind of like a dark gray. And honestly, I don't think most people will even notice this because the display already looks fantastic, but I'm so used to using my MacBook Pro 14 inch display, which does have the really inky blacks and stuff. And when you put them side by side, I mean, the studio display just looks kind of trashy, honestly, compared to the MacBook Pro. But for most stuff, when you're just like web surfing and playing games or whatever, the studio display looks absolutely phenomenal. I guess that brings us to the 60 Hertz refresh rate that I think is the biggest kind of downfall of this monitor, especially in 2022, when a lot of displays, a lot of smartphone displays at least, are going towards the 120 Hertz or above refresh rate or even a variable refresh rate like in Apple's ProMotion. And for some people, I think actually a lot of people, they won't even notice that 60 Hertz versus 120 Hertz, like they probably won't care. But what kind of confuses me about this monitor is it's called the studio display and all of the marketing that Apple put into this display is like you put this in your art studio, in your video studio, in your photo studio, etc. Like this is kind of like the working professionals display. And I think there's a lot of truth to that marketing, but then you think about things like no HDR for a video editor and also no promotion for a professional kind of person that wants all of you know the bells and whistles that are in all these Apple products these days. I'm using this beautiful 55 inch Sony A80J behind me as my kind of external monitor experience because it does have full OLED videos and stuff look amazing on it. So after using the A80J behind me for a while and then going to this studio display, it kind of feels like a downgrade. And weirdly, it's kind of made me appreciate my MacBook Pro display even more because yes, the MacBook Pro is $2,000 to start. It's an expensive machine, but the display is absolutely bonkers. It's the most beautiful display I've ever used on any computer. But the 60 Hertz thing is not the end of the world. Like I said, I don't think most people will even notice 60 Hertz versus 120 Hertz. But where that makes a difference is kind of in the main UI. Like it just makes a lot of things when you're scrolling around, when you're surfing through Safari and stuff like that. That's where I think the 120 Hertz variable refresh rate in ProMotion would have made a pretty significant difference in this monitor, especially if you're paying about almost $2,000 for this thing. Like why isn't there ProMotion on this thing? Why does it not support HDR in 2022? It kind of feels like this monitor was designed a few years ago and it's just finally coming out for whatever reason. So yeah, it does feel a little bit dated. It feels a little bit like an antique device, weirdly, even though it looks really futuristic. It feels like I'm going back in time with the studio display. And then there's other things like the webcam, which is kind of trash quality. It's super grainy, very unimpressive. But then the internal speakers are actually really good for a monitor, especially the built-in microphones are really good. If you're doing Zoom, if you're doing a lot of meetings and stuff on the interwebs and you want a nice huge display with a built-in webcam, this is kind of the best display for you if you have the cash. It's nice to have that 27 inch 5K display, you know, where you see a bunch of your zoom windows, you know, huge on there and you have that webcam and it's just kind of like a plug and play type of experience. Another caveat about this display is it's not really a multi-purpose display such as my Sony display back there where I can plug in my Nintendo Switch into that. I have an Apple TV plugged into that. You know, it's a display kind of for a bunch of different purposes where something like the studio display is meant for your Mac or your iPad where you just plug your device directly into the display and it will charge your MacBook Pro, which I forgot to mention. That's a really cool feature, but you can't plug a Nintendo Switch or a PS5 or whatever into the studio display. You can only plug your computer or iPad into this monitor. So it's not a multi-purpose monitor in the same way a display like a Dell UltraSharp or something is. Another kind of weird thing about the display technology itself is while it is beautiful, it supports the P3 wide color gamut. Color accuracy is amazing. However, there is a little bit of light leak on the sides. Like you you see actually a little bit of light leak slash a little bit of shadowing sometimes when you're watching something really bright, you know, with a nice white background or something. There's a tiny bit of shadowing on the left and right sides, which makes it feel a little cheap. And I wouldn't expect that on a monitor that costs $1,600 just to start. Like at that price, this thing better be absolutely perfect. There better be no shadowing. There better be no light leaks. I wanna see a clean, perfect display. And that is kind of a big bummer about this display as well, is it does have those kinds of display issues. It doesn't have any kind of flickering or kind of weird, cheap, cheap display feeling issues. It's just like that kind of light 
leak and shadow type of stuff, like why is that in a $1,600 display? Those kinds of issues like no ProMotion, the weird older IPS display decision, the power cable that can't be taken out, no power button, a really inferior webcam. There's a lot of issues in this display and it feels kind of half-baked, especially at the astronomical price. But that said, it also is incredibly well-built. I think it's a beautiful design overall. It kind of makes my desk look sharp and snazzy and futuristic as hell. And I love the ease of use. You just plug your Thunderbolt cable from your device into the back of the monitor. It turns on, you're ready to go. And it is a really beautiful beautiful companion display, not better than the MacBook Pro 14 inch or 16 inch, but it is good as a companion for your Mac. And I think it's a really good monitor overall. It's kind of money well spent. And since you watched this entire video, I would like to personally invite you to my Discord channel, The House of Aqua. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. It's where we're talking about the Mac Studio, Studio Display, a bunch of other stuff. I will see you in the Discord. And also add me on Twitter and Instagram at B3N. A-Q-U-A. Smash the like button and subscribe down below if you're not already, and I'll see you in the next one.